Hey, everybody. It's fringe season, my favorite time of year. And while this year's a little different, we're not going to be able to get together in person. We are going to have some online events. And one of those is a new show called Killjoy Ohio from some of my favorite people. Let's take a look here. We've got Trey and Bridget, and we've got Jordan as well. Let's talk about your show and what's what's it all about. What's Killjoy Ohio about? Oh, sure. We didn't think about this at all. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, um, Killjoy Ohio. It's uh, this is the wrong way to get into it. The biggest thing for us was trying to figure out like how to tell a story when we have to be online, or like how to tell a story when we can't be in the same room to rehearse where we can't be in the same room to perform. And so it kind of, we kind of started with like all of the problems and then said, what's a story that we could tell from there forward. And then kind of going with that, because I'm a high school teacher, my day has really kind of been consumed the last month and a half with hanging out with kids who are just unendingly sad at all times because of lost proms and lost opportunities to hang out and lost graduations and baccalaureates and and so, but then also when we when we knew that we were moving to the online version, we scrapped the thing that we were gonna be doing. Yeah, because the online play that Trey had sort of started dreaming up, hadn't really written anything yet, was about a man who was trapped at the bottom of the ocean. And I was like, Trey, no one wants to see your quarantine play. Like that is not, that is not how we are going to sell tickets. No, nope, we've all been living that. No one wants to see that play version. And she was just like, it has to be funny. <laughs> And that was kind of it. So yeah, so Killjoy Ohio, uh, Jordan and I play two people named uh, Trey and Jordan. Um, which... I'm playing Trey and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, because it just, I don't know, it felt weird to like, to, to have to watch two people that you know play two strangers in a strange way. And so like, like we're playing ourselves in a way to kind of keep it familiar. Uh, the two of us live in a fictional town uh, just north of Zanesville where very, very, very bizarre things happen, and the two of them uh, kind of meet by happenstance and then kind of band together to uncover why things mysteriously disappear in this town in the middle of the state. So guess, more more supernatural elements like you're used, oh, to, we're used to seeing from you. Yeah, yeah and I'm the sure... teaser for the show oh, is... I don't even remember. You a know. What Done It. Oh, a what, yeah, yeah. yeah. A What Done It about small towns, Bermuda Triangles, and the links people will go to to discover what they've lost. I have the um, press release in front of me. That's exactly what it says. Good job. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. so it's um, it's it's a play about uh, all the things that we've lost and and finding them again, and Bridget's making me make it funny. So yeah, that's all. I do. <laughs> yeah, so Bridget, talk about maybe the challenge or the the. I mean, it's probably the first time you've directed a online production. Right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, so that was the big thing was trying to decide early when we knew that it was going online was, hey, uh, how are we going to do this? Our, is, is Jordan going to be game to do online rehearsals? Because we're obviously not breaking quarantine and like meeting up. So it's like, okay, so what are those limitations then? And it would make most sense for Trey and Jordan to be in it if, if Jordan was in. And luckily she said yes. Um, but it was this challenge of like, well, how are we going to make a play that is not for an audience, for an audience that is with us in the room? And I think that was one of the benefits of Zoinks was the play was so funny because there were so many people and you could get that energy yeah. and excitement. Oh my God, This we're having such a good time together. And so it was like, okay, well, how are we going to create a play and how are we going to rehearse a play that really needs to be written for someone who's watching it in their bed at midnight or watching it with their family later in the afternoon? So like, how do we adjust the rehearsal process and then the final product for the audience that is maybe seeing it, you know, an audience of two or one or in their, you know, in their home without the infectious audience around them. Yeah. And then how do you take something that's not theater and still make it feel like theater? Right. And so that ultimately we've decided the way the format of the play is going to be the same way in which we're rehearsing it. So we're rehearsing it through Zoom, but the way we're eventually going to record it is a single one take shot of the performance um, and uploading it, but it will be viewed as um, a Zoom conference. Yeah. Interesting. Ultimately, right. like we're not filmmakers, right? We're theater right. makers. And yeah. so once you start filming things, editing them together, then you're making a movie. And like there's a reason that 
doing yeah. like stage theater is is so different than than something that you would see just like on film or like you know this isn't Netflix it's theater. Yeah. And, and you've got experience, Jordan, with with both, right? With film and with theater. So uh, kind of merging both of those skill sets with this project. What's it like to work with Trey and Bridget? First of all. Oh, it's always a pleasure. It's a joy. I think every single rehearsal there has been a wonderful surprise. Um, and I also very much enjoy, I think like the, so something illustrative, like the, the first phone call, um, that Bridget was referencing when they were like, Hey, is this something that you would be interested in doing? Basically doing a show where we can't be in the same room where we can't see each other. And, um, and she was just like, so don't, you know, I mean, like, don't feel like you have to say yes. And, and I like that, like, I mean, we want, we want you, but you know, don't feel like guilty there or something, you know, it's just because we did this last year and it was fantastic and amazing. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. Of course, you know, you guys make such incredible art and I love making incredible art with you. And, um, but that we were able to, uh, to sort of agree that this was the, the format that we wanted to use kind of together. And that also <laughs> it was a, um, uh, I was like, well, yeah, I would love to do this, but I also don't want to like make Trey write me into a show if it's easier for him to not do that. And so we all kind of came yeah, to this. Was like, oh, we all want to be here. We all want to do this together, which is which is super cool. So, what do you say, Trey? Well, and then, yeah, no, uh, Jordan was like, you know, I would feel bad for Trey not to, to force a thing. And I was like, well, he hasn't started writing it, so we're fine. Yeah, you're totally good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're we're well, kind of pivoting. We're all pivoting right now. <laughs> Yeah. And and obviously they wouldn't ask you if they didn't appreciate your working relationship, which uh, which oh, yeah, comes no, th- which comes through on stage. Uh, last year's show was so much fun, and I think that uh, you guys continue to find new ways to tell stories. And this year presents such an interesting challenge that I'm excited to check it out. So Fringe Festival, Killjoy, Ohio. Anything else you want to tell us about it before we uh, let you guys go? Do you, oh. you want to mention the murder closet? Uh, no, Jordan, you should, you should, you should explain what we've made you do to your apartment. (laughs) So this is, um, this room became completely empty as of, I think yesterday, this was, uh, my, like my partner in my office. And so my partner, James is, uh, he's a physician. And so he's going to, you know, hospitals and working in the medical field and like dealing with all of this every day. And I was like, cool, we're going to do theater. So you have to, you have to move your office into the living room. (laughs) Um, but yeah, so this is, we've got like. This is a closet where everything is now. <laughs> and then we have wallpaper covering my windows. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, it's it's all about transforming the idea of space, right? I mean, you're not in the space of a theater. You're in the space of the Zoom void or the room or whatever we lay on top of the room to make it, you know, what we want the audience to see, which I think is really cool. We created this kind of blank canvas. Trace is a murder closet. Mine is the only other bedroom in my apartment. <laughs> Um, but we also really value the fringe community. And so um, we are very excited to announce oh, I, oh, okay. um, yeah. that we are um, making buttons for our fringe show. So you can sign up on our website, queenstateflash.com, um, to sign up for one or two buttons. And we will come deliver them to you. Um, nice. We only ask that you hashtag uh, you know, the Cincinnati Fringe and our show and Queen City Flash. But yeah, we're we're really sad that this isn't happening in person, and so we're like, well, what aspect of it can we maintain that makes us feel like we're all linked? So I felt like buttons was a way to be like, oh right, that that feels like fringe in person. So how can we do that and still keep everyone safe? That's great. Yeah, it's going to be a very yeah. interesting. It's kind of a sad, um, you know, reality that we're not going to all get together and celebrate, but we still are uh, going to see great art, and I'm very excited yeah. about that. And, uh, yeah. Tell us that website one more time. Uh, it's queencityflash.com. It looks oh, like Trey. What? what? I think I lost the oh, Trey lost the buttons in the cleaning. We were going to show you, but uh, we, we don't good. know where they are right now. <laughs> you'll, find them, you'll find them before it's time to bring them. Yes. Yeah, every single thing that was in my closet a week ago is now living in all of the upstairs hallway. So. Yeah, it's somewhere. But yeah, if you sign up, we will bring you buttons. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Jordan, anything you want to add? Um, yeah, I'm just, I'm really excited that we're going to be moving forward and doing this this year. Um, and yeah, while all of the, the, the really cool parts of Fringe where we all get together and hang out at the bar and we talk about all the great things that we've seen, I think that, I think that what's going on is a really great way to recapture that kind of joy while moving forward and kind of figuring out the, the sort of weird wild world that we live in now. 
Um, and I think that like it really shows the resilience and the strength of the artists in this community that there are so many people who are participating in this and continuing to make fantastic art in the face of you know kind of a, a thing that every day feels like new and fresh hell. So <laughs> it's uh, it's good to uh, to be able to look forward to that and to work with you know great people and we're still having fun and and helping other people through their art, you know, interpret all of the weird feelings that are happening for everybody. So I think that this is not only helpful for us as artists, but I think it's good for, you know, consumers of art as well. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> well, check out all the information, queencityflash.com and also cincyfringe.com. And we will be bringing you more fringe coverage throughout the next few weeks. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>